Good evening, welcome along to Inside the Hive on Christmas Eve Eve. Just a couple of days to go until the big man arrives for Christmas Day. Uh, lots going up on tonight's show. Uh, Chiara Miola is going to be taking on the 60 Second Challenge. Uh, Yuri Kutska is going to have an exclusive interview with us. We're going to look at the 2021 Goal of the Year. The women's team are taking on a toy drop hunt. And we're also going to start putting together our Watford All-Time Greatest 11. Now I can't do this show on my own as always and I've got two players who would certainly be on Santa's nice list after their performances for Watford and first of all it's our regular the legend that is Mr Tommy Mooney. Tommy how are you? Very well good evening. All ready for Christmas? I am ready. Wrapped? Last good? presents wrapped this morning. Good yeah. man. So no Christmas Eve dash tomorrow for you? Just for food. That's it. All the presents are done. Santa's done really well at my house. Good good. Uh, my second guest on tonight's show as well was another Watford striker, we welcome Gifton Noel Williams on to the show. Gifton, how are you? I'm good, thanks, Chris. How are you doing? I'm very well. All ready for Christmas for you as well? Yes, yeah, we're all ready for Christmas. We're ready for the, the big man to come and drop off some, some gifts for me. Good, good. Yeah. good. <laughs> what's, what's top of the list this year for Gifton? What, 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 I can't say, I can't say. I've written in my letter. So oh, okay. it's, it's, a, it's a private secret. conversation, so yeah. To see. I'm, I'm going to ask for a roll neck so I can be part of the game. <laughs> obviously, you didn't I, get the memo. The, the uh, email went round. I'm not in that WhatsApp group. Obviously, some friends. <laughs> you offer some yeah. friends, then you might have known. <laughs> uh, first of all, Gifton, let's have a little chat with you about the uh, women's team because, of course, uh, you've been doing some coaching with them. Uh, you joined. I think it was the first ever inside the Hive show. You joined us, and you were just about to start that that coaching journey. How's that going? Yeah, it's been great. You know, um, the, the the women have accepted accepted me into the in the, as a coach. Um, I'm enjoying it. It's 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 fun. It's it's football. It's it's being involved in a first team environment. Um, so yeah, I'm really really enjoying it. They really um, like to listen to my ideas and and things I have to say. I've had loads of great little conversations with individual players as well. So it's really just my time at the moment, just trying to get to know the players personally, really, because obviously I'm stepping in. We've got the manager, we've got the coaches. So I do a little bit of coaching, and apart from that, it's just me trying to find out how how these players are, what makes them tick. And just trying to give them little hints and little little things that can maybe help their game, that little one percent. Mm. We had Helen in a few weeks back, and she was saying that this season is all about that progression. And and are you seeing that as well? Obviously, we're seeing the results are getting there as well. But from a training perspective, just week on week, that team is growing and gelling together even more. Yeah, you know, if you look at the results or where the team is in the in, in the league, then you could judge it as as something. But this year is, I think, for the management staff and and for the club is about consolidation and staying in the league. Um, it's been hard at the moment. They've only won a game and, and only got bombed the league at the moment. But the mood in the training ground is not like they're a team that's bombing the league. They're, they're very upbeat. I think they know, I think all the players know that they're good enough to gain enough points this season to stay up. So it's just keeping a positive mental attitude and, and keeping the environment friendly and keeping it um, positive. Um, and, and I'm sure they'll pick up enough points as the season goes on. Awesome. Uh, right, lots to talk about then, because uh, there's lots of fixtures on the way over this festive period. Now, of course, uh, if you would have seen the statement a little bit earlier on today, you'll know that our game versus Wolves on Boxing Day has been postponed. The official statement from the Premier League released earlier on today says that Watford FC continue to have insufficient numbers of players to field a team after their game against Crystal Palace last Saturday was postponed following a COVID-19 outbreak due to players coming out of isolation. It is fully expected Watford will be available for their fixture on Tuesday the 28th of December against West Ham. So if you were planning on travelling uh, to the Wolves game, keep an eye on the website for all the details about that and of course the rearranged fixtures that will be scheduled in the coming weeks and months. So please keep an eye on the official website for that. But just to let you know, the game on Boxing Day has been postponed. But as it stands from the Premier League statement, it's fully expected Watford will be available for their fixture on Tuesday, the 28th of December against West Ham. That was a three o'clock kickoff. And of course, after that as well, Saturday, January the 1st, three o'clock, uh, Watford versus Tottenham Hotspur. Um, Tommy, let's have a chat because this time of year, we've spoken about this before, you know, lots of games around Christmas, the players want to play. And obviously this is going to be a bit of a disruption, those last few games being postponed. Yeah, I mean, we've seen it before, so I think that that has to help this time around. It's slightly different now, but obviously they'd be disappointed they've had games cancelled because footballers want to play. They want to play games. If, you, if you're not playing games, then you're, you're either isolating or you're training with no real focus on a game um, to come. So that's not what the, what the players will want. I think the, the most important thing is we keep everybody safe. We say that all of the time, but we look forward to two home games in a week. Next week is two home games. That's the way we've got to look at it. 
you've got to focus on and, and prepare like the games are going to be played and we hope to see a reaction from the, the little rest period that we've had from games. Um, Gifton, how important are those home games around the Christmas time? Because the fans are always incredible here at Vicarage Road, but at Christmas as well, it's always that little bit of extra spice. You might be bringing someone to a game who doesn't get to many games throughout the year. Yeah, there's always a little bit extra spice at Vicarage Road around Christmas. Um, I think two two home games in a week is massive. Um, in, in the Premier League, we, we know getting a win is always far far away. When you've got a home game and you've got two games that potentially you could get some points from, um, I know that all the players will want these games to be played, but also we've got to look into the players' welfare and the, the players' well-being to make sure that they're OK. And as long as they're OK and they're able to play, then you know, I'd love to have two home games this week. It'd be great. Yeah, no, massively. I guess as well, we just have to think about that, these rearranged games. Obviously, there's the player welfare aspect to that as well, because obviously we've got players that are going to be disappearing to the African Cup of Nations as well. Um, and obviously there's that welfare expert for those rearranged games from the Premier League as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, it, you know, we're heavily hit. By, by the African Nations Cup. So um, it's one of those, we need to get some, some points on the board. And, and I think with the way, certainly in the last week or 10 days or so, you can see how unpredictable teams are and formations might stay the same, but the, the players and individuals, you see, you know, last night, the Liverpool versus Leicester, there was so many changes in both starting uh, 11. So it, I think it's a little bit more unpredictable. And I think that's a positive for us. Um, we've gone into two big games with West Ham and Tottenham at home. We don't know what team we can select, let alone what team they're going to select. So whoever prepares the most and, and gives, the, gives the most come match day could get that result. Yeah, Master. Let's have a look at the league table and just remind us uh, where we are uh, at the moment in the league. Of course, uh, 17, 16 games played so far, 13 points on the board. And, and Gifton, me and Tommy have been talking about over the last few weeks, you know, that, that difficult block of games, which we got some great performances out of, some, some great results as well. Um, the team have really want to, want to hit the ground running, aren't they, for these next few games and into January as well? Oh, yeah, 100%. As I've said before, a win the Premiership is always hard to come, come around. And when I'm watching games where we're doing really well against teams like Chelsea game, where we've done really, really well and other games that we've, we've done very really well in, it's about picking up those points when we can and trying to go on a little run. The more, the longer we can stay unbeaten, the more game pick points we can pick up week by week. You know, mentally, it's just, it's just great in the Premier League because I think the Premier League is a league where, because you don't win, as I keep saying, but you don't win for so long, mentally it can really kill you. And during this COVID time and players worried, players tired, if you're losing games during that time, it could really do something really negative to the environment of, of their setting at Watford. So I hope that we do pick up some points because I think points make everyone happy. When you're winning games, you're not as tired. So everyone talks about games coming thick and fast, but if Watford win the first game on the 28th, I guarantee all those players will be up for it, they'll be fresh and they'll be able to go again. If they lose that game and then with all the COVID and tiredness, then sometimes that all sometimes comes into it, Tom. Yeah, I think, I think when you look at the table, you have to look at the, the, the positive side of it. Yes, we're, we're fourth from bottom, but we're outside the relegation spots and we've not played for two weeks. We've got games in hand over the teams in and around us and the, those teams have been as affected as we are at this, at this current stage of the season. So I think you take that positive because, you know, probably six weeks ago when we knew we were facing that block of four yeah. we get a fabulous result against Manchester United and that gives you the impetus for some good performances we didn't get the results to follow that Manchester United one but but in spells we were very very good yeah. and again at Brentford in the first half we've mentioned before so there's there's many many positives when you look at that yes we're close to the bottom of the table I get that but there's positivity to be, to be taken from that position in the fact that other teams around us are losing games all the time when they're playing them. I think as well, Tom, if you really look at it realistically, Watford being fourth from bottom at this time of the year, it's not the worst thing in the world. If you look at the teams that are underneath us, if you would have said at the beginning of the season, I'm sure many people would have thought that we would have been bottom or second from bottom at this, at this time. So where we're at, as Tom said, is a real positive place. It's a, we're outside the rele relegation zone. And we've got a couple points um, um, window there. And I just think as long as we keep on plug, plugging along and keep it positive, like Tom said, I think. August to Christmas for the newly promoted teams is a transitional mm -hmm. period. You've got to get your, play, get your players ready to play in the Premier League. Mm -hmm. And then you've got to get, as a group, be ready for the Premier League. Mm -hmm. So I, I think I agree with Gifton. I think it being outside of that bottom three is just a, it's a small psychological boost. Mm -hmm. But... In these games where there's such small margin, a small boost is, is everything that you need. And a real positive as well, if you look at those teams around Watford as well, 
they're struggling to score goals, whereas Watford actually can find those goals with the attacking line as well. So that's a real positive take as well. Um, let's talk about Christmas for you guys when you were playing. Um, what was it like? Was there training on Christmas Day? Did you get much time with the family? Were you just really focused on football? What was it like for you both? I, I always trained Christmas Day and predominantly for, I think I, I played for 19 years. I think I had one Christmas off the year I was injured here and I'd have loved to have been training and playing. So I'd have swapped. It says a lot for your injured. family, doesn't it? I'd rather be training. <laughs> no, but you always, particularly with Graham Taylor, you always, he turned it round and a lot of managers after um, Graham Taylor that I played for did very similar. It was the first time I'd ever, we had the morning off. So you have Christmas with the kids, you have your lunch. We used to train here at 5.30 and then go into the hotel, home or away. So you prepared properly. Other managers, some, I've been in it at seven, eight, nine o'clock in, in the morning. And then you, you're you missing that, the, seeing the kids wake up and open their presents. Or they've got to wait for daddy to come back. You know, it, it that affects Christmas. GT changed it around. And, and Steve Bruce was exactly the same at, at, at Birmingham. We train late and go to the hotels. Footballers know this is the best time of the season for a footballer because you want to play games. You don't want to be training. Training is boring. You want to play games. And this is the this period and the Easter period where it's you don't even think about training. Most yeah. of the time you don't even train because you're playing so many yeah. games. Yeah. So I, I feel for the players again. Felt for them last season, no fans. Now they're, now they're having a Christmas period with no games. So it, it's difficult for them. Mm. Some good memories of, of playing around Christmas time for you as well? Yeah, you? you know, as Tommy said, Christmas time is one of the best times because you've got so many games in a short space of time. And especially if you're playing a team that's trying to get promotion or trying to do something, it's a, it's a great time to get a good run on. Um, my memories, are probably similar to Tommy's, I suppose, started with GT. And he was very family oriented. Even though it was football, he wanted everyone to spend time with their families, have time with their families, see the kids open the presents, um, be with the wife or the, or, the, or the missus and do all the things that, that family is required of you, the family. And then after that, you come to the training ground to the ground, it wasn't the training ground, it was the ground. Mm. We do a session, you're locked away, and it's football now, because you've had your day with the family. Now, I had some other managers that done the opposite, and it did make sometimes um, Christmas not so pleasurable, because you have to train in the morning, then go into a hotel, so you spend the whole day away from your family for the mm. most part. Um, so there were some managers that done stuff like that, but at the end of the day, we had to play football. And no matter how you feel about not being with your family and stuff like that, during the Christmas night, the next day when it's Boxing Day and it's a 12 o'clock kickoff and there's a bit of freshness in the air and there's a bit of energy going on around the place, all of that goes out the window and you're just happy to be playing. I think a player's mentality is you see the Boxing Day game, you win that game, that's your reward for the, yes. for the commitment yeah. uh, that you've showed over the Christmas period in the way that you prepare and the way that, you know, when everybody's eating more than they should and drinking more than they should, which I probably will this year. While I was a player, you had to watch everybody else doing that, knowing I'm a professional. You're not a professional because you, you're being paid. You're a professional because you pay attention to detail. And that's the, that's the key to it for the players. And that's why I, I'm sure these players will be disappointed yeah. the games off. And me as well, I used to enjoy going to the hotel for that reason as well, because everyone's having festive times. So everyone's having festive times and you know you can't join in. So you don't yeah. really want to be around that. I'd rather go to the hotel and be around people who are sacrificing like myself mm -hmm. and we can have our evening together and, and get ready and prepare for the next day because the next day is normally war. And Christmas is not <clears> like New, New Year, you'd be in a hotel, but all you could hear around you was parties <laughs> yeah. and, you, and you had a curfew. You were in your, in your room for, for nine o'clock or half an hour after. There wasn't even a card school or anything like that in somebody else's room. Yeah. Christmas is, it, it's Different. an easy time to, easier time yeah. to focus than New Year. Nice, well a little a festive treat for you now. As a reward for that sacrifice, uh, we're going to take you back to a very special moment in your career. Let's take a look at this. And equalised with an excellent move. A great pass by Johnson for Kennedy. Kennedy's ball in left by Smart for the arriving Noel Williams. The message to the fans, happy Christmas, love Gifton. There we go, a nice strong celebration there as well. Yeah, Good me memory, that one. Yeah, me and Heidi always had, had some form of celebration. It's probably from something that happened during the week or, <laughs> or something that I said to him or he said to me a couple of days before. And they, when, when I scored or when he scored, we'd always do a little 
some form of celebration, yeah. Nice, love that. <laughs> okay, let's uh, continue things now in the festive spirit. There's what, 48 hours or less to go until the big day. Now, the women's team uh, were involved in a little bit of fun here at the ground, and they had a little bit of a toy drop treasure hunt. Players of Watford FC Women, top secret. Players of Watford FC Women, your mission, if you choose to accept, is to find the missing presents Santa has left behind for the Watford FC toy drop. Succeed and we have a secret giveaway for all those watching, but fail and ruin Christmas for kids at home. This message will self-destruct in five seconds. <laughs> guys, guys, guys. Ah. Let's go check the walkthrough. Ah. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Right, quickly, Hal. No, he said red. No, he said no, he said yellow. How high are we going? I don't know, but my legs are gone. How high are we saying? <clears throat> so we're the winners. We found it, we found it, we found it. Hells, give us a show. Give us a show. Woo! Oh, look, there's no fool in me. Oh, these are the seats. I knew I could smell it. I thought it would just be really picked. Oh, oh, I just. <laughs> Find the last one and then drop the presents off. Let's go! Let's go! Oh, 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 We've made it back. Let's go put the presents inside. If you want to give us a like, comment as to why you think you should win the ball and subscribe, you could be the lucky winner. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Well, there we go then. If you want to get your hands on that sign ball, very simply, just head over to the Women's YouTube channel, uh, hit subscribe, like, and uh, drop a comment in there, and you could be the winner of that signed ball. Okay, time now for another 60-second challenge. Uh, the leaderboard is hotting up as more players take this on. Uh, this week, it's the turn of Chiara Miola. Hi, I'm Chiara Miola, and this is my 60-second challenge. Ronaldo or Messi? Ronaldo. Favourite social media channel? Instagram. Long distance or short distance running? Short distance. Best dish you can cook? Uh, Portland Greeny. Favourite movie? Um, Poetic Justice. Worst teammate to share a room with? Ruby. City or country life? Uh, city. Skiing or snowboarding? Snowboarding. Home or away days? Home. Team you supported as a kid? Man United. Fancy restaurant or takeaway? Takeaway. If you could play any instrument, what would it be? Uh, violin. Best stadium apart from Vickery Road? Uh, Old Trafford. Tea or coffee? Tea. First car you owned? Uh, Peugeot. First musician or, uh, favourite musician or group? Um, Roddy Rich. Netflix or Prime? Netflix. Text message or phone call? Phone call. Football manager or FIFA? FIFA. Favourite food? Pasta. Penalty shootout in a final, would you go first or last? First. Last minute winner or hat trick? Last minute winner. Morning person or night owl? Night owl. If you could change position, where would you play? Uh, goalkeeper. Favourite sport other than football? Basketball. VAR, love it or hate it? Hate it. Oh. That was pressure! There we go then, Kiara knocking Ben Foster off top spot there, 23 points him, 26 for Kiara, so the new benchmark has been set on that. Um, boys, I like to always throw a follow-up question off the back of that. Favourite movie was in that one, favourite Christmas movie, have you boys got one? I watched one of mine this morning, Jack Frost. Oh, good film. Home Alone for me, the whole, the whole series, all of them, Home Alone. What, back to back? Yeah, Home Alone, it's got to be all of them. Go nice. watch them all. So if you're picking three, I'm throwing um, <laughs> Miracle on 34th Street in there as well. Nice. 
good effort. Enjoy those. Uh, right, let's uh, run you through a few things coming up then this Christmas because, of course, uh, there is action uh, coming your way on the 28th. So as we mentioned, of course, that Wolves game has been postponed, but there is action here at Vicarage Rose as it stands at the moment. Tuesday, December the 28th. Three o'clock kickoff for that one. Tommy will be on commentary as always. Stay tuned to all the club channels for exclusive build-up and reaction for that. Of course, uh, Watford FC continues to invite supporters to upload their vaccination status following the guidance from the Premier League for the implementation of the government's COVID-19 plan B. Head of the Hornets match against West Ham and Tottenham, the club have sent out email links to each season ticket holder and match ticket holder as well. Uh, we encourage all relevant supporters to click the link, answer the questions regardless of their vaccination status. Uh, it, is it is voluntary, so you can choose uh, not to and you can yeah, of course, if you're medical exemptions, uh, you'll be required to produce evidence of a negative lateral flow test via the NHS COVID app. You can get more information at watfordfc.com. So as I mentioned, then, these are the festive fixtures for you. Watford versus West Ham is on Tuesday and then Saturday, the 1st of January. Three o'clock kickoff on that one as well. We will be hosting Tottenham Hotspur. The Women in Action as well on Sunday the 9th of January, 3 o'clock kickoff for that one at Kings Langley FC. They take on the London City Lionesses. You can get your tickets now at tickets.watfordfc.com. And as always after Christmas and Boxing Day and New Year, there's always a very good January sale in the club shop. So you can keep your eyes on that one, shop.watfordfc.com if you want to spend your money from Santa. And of course, it's an incredibly difficult time, we know, for lots of people right now. Hornets at Home is there for you uh, if you need us, of course. Uh, supporters at watfordfc.com if you want to drop us an email. And the phone line is there for you as well, 01923 uh, of course, Tommy Gifton, you were both heavily involved with, with Watford at home as well. And that, that support is uh, invaluable throughout the year, but especially at Christmas as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, it's just one of the uh, initiatives that the club have had for, for, for a long time now. I've made a couple of calls this week and, you know, like you say, it, it really is don't feel awkward about it. Contact the club and, and, and the club will do everything they can to help. Yeah, I think Gifton is important, isn't it? If you need it, just pick the phone up. Yeah, 100%. You know, um, <clears throat> if I'm honest, I actually enjoy it. Um, speaking to fans and speaking to um, speaking to people who have been going through some stuff or at home by themselves or whatever the situation is, and yeah, pick up the phone. You know, pick up the phone, and always, always good to speak to someone. It's always good to ask for help. So. 100% yeah. pick up the phone. Yeah, certainly is, and we are there for you as a club, as always. OK, time now for an exclusive here on Inside the Hive, a player who's going to hope to feature over the festive period and make an impact. Uh, time now for an exclusive interview with Yuri Kutska. Uh, was playing, getting the move to Watford and playing in the Premier League, is that a dream come true for you? And the Premier League so far, is it more difficult than you expected with Watford? Or how are you, how are you finding it as a league? Sì, è un, un sogno che è diventato realtà per me, che sono felice che sono qua, che gioco nel Watford, che, no, che gioco nella Premier League. E, cioè, devo dire la verità che non sapevo cosa aspettare perché, come ho già detto prima, che ho visto solo nel TV, quindi era dura dire cosa mi aspetta, ma certo è una top league il mondo, ma la differenza tra tipo Serie A e Inghilterra c'è, ma non è così enorme che non si, può, non si può stare in questo livello, cioè o ti fa difficoltà. Well, it seems you've adapted very quickly, 11 starts since you've arrived at Watford. So how pleased are you to be right in the centre of what they're doing and Claudio Ranieri to, to be playing underneath him? I'm going to be able to do it, yes, because I'm used to change the country from a child who I wasn't at home, who I went to home quickly, so I lived at home alone, so I was also used to change quando ho cambiato paese da, Repubblica, da Slovacchia a Repubblica Ceca, Ceca, Italia, che sono già abituato a questo, non mi fa qualche problema, no? che adesso mi manca casa o così, quindi so che sono professionista, devo fare questo, sono venuto qua per, per giocare, quindi era il mio obiettivo venire qua e giocare, poi certo ci sono episodi che non giochi, giochi meno giochi più quindi ma sempre devi dare il massimo per 
dimostrare al allenatore che vuoi essere in campo. Of course, Juri has signed on loan from Parma. Uh, explain there about how he's always dreamt of playing in the Premier League. Obviously, you can see his career stats there, Tommy, on the screen. Um, you know, incredibly well-travelled player. Lots of experienced clubs that he's played for there. Of course, AC Milan in the mix as well. Um, what have you made of him so far? He's obviously a combative midfielder. I get why he's played in, in Italy for a long time. You know, the defensive midfielder there has been a key component in their teams for a long time. But... You mentioned it, the, the teams that he's played. He's played a lot of games in the top flight in, in Italy, so very experienced. I'm sure he'd have liked to have played more games, um, but you know he's come into the team. And I think that the, he allows the likes of Tom Cleverley to, to go forward and join him with the front three. So, yeah, he's been a vital part to it. And Gifton, obviously, you mentioned there, obviously, he's always dreamt to play in that Premier League. You've alluded to it earlier on. It's, it's a tough league to come into, isn't it? Even though that experience at some of the you know, big leagues across Italy and things like that, it's, it's a different ball game coming into play in the Premier League. Yeah, the Premier League's faster, but he's a big physical lad and he, he gets around the pitch quite well. And I've, the games I've seen him play and the games I've watched him play, he's, he's, he gets around the pitch, he gets stuck in and he just plays a simple pass and does things quite simply. So I think he's adjusted to the Premier League quite well. I think if he was maybe a flair player or something like that, then I think it takes a bit longer for those types of players to adjust into the Premier League because it is a bit quicker and it is a bit more robust and things like that. But I think physically he's adjusted into the team really well. When I've seen him play, he's got around the pitch well and, and used the ball quite well. So, yeah. OK, a player there then, of course, who wants to make their impact over the festive football fixtures. Uh, right, time now to talk about goals, because, of course, my two guests on the show tonight know just a little bit about scoring goals. As we come to the end of the calendar year, there's been some great goals in the year that has been 2021, and you get the chance uh, to pick your favourite. So let's take a little look at the nominees. His right foot, Talabar's shot, what a strike that is! Watford back in it, straight away, and it's the captain, Nathaniel Talabar! Sar into the penalty here, onto his left foot, oh, what a goal! What a goal from Ismail Asar! Here's Ismail Asar, into the penalty area again, it's two! Sar again! They just can't handle him! Taking the lie off here, now Wolf with off the tune to shot in the nice little yeah. Oh, what an equaliser there! From O'Leary! And Watford are level! Here's Isaac's success. Success! How about that to finish the season? Isaac success with his first league goal since October 2018. The referee's content to let it go though because Watford still have it with Kucho. He's straight into the thick of things. Oh! But it is a stunning introduction to English football for Cucho Hernandez. Well, that's not been dealt with at all. Route one might even work for Watford here. Oh, what about that for a finish from five? And the newcomers are up and running with half an hour to play. Game on. Jao Pedro. There's a ball on in the middle here. King is on his own. King to win it! What an incredible turnaround! Everton wide, wide, wide open. And wide beaming smiles on Watford faces. 
Beckett it is lining up this free kick. Beckett goes for goal and Beckett finds the bottom corner. 31 minutes on the clock and Watford have taken the lead. There we go then, some of the best goals from the calendar year, January to December. You get the chance to vote for your favourite uh, and then we will reveal the winner on next week's show. To vote, just head to the club app uh, and you can have your say on your favourite goals out of the list that are right there. Um, Tommy Gifton, let's uh, pick out a few of these that stand out for you. Tommy, starting for you. I think Chalabar at the top, technically, that's, that's very, very good skill in a very tight area. A really important part of the game. To be as composed as that, to move from your left foot to your right foot is, is an excellent finish. Mm. I, I also have to say, Ismail Asar's two goals, if he doesn't score the first one, he doesn't score the second one because he had the confidence to take the shot. So it, when he, he cuts inside on his weaker left foot and still has the composure to bend it in the far corner, you know, and then only minutes later, he has another opportunity and goes for power. Um, I think those are, are, are excellent strikes. How about for you, Gifton? No, I'm going with what Tommy said. I think you can add on there Success's goal um, against Swansea and Hernandez's goal against Aston Villa as well. You can put them in the, in the mix as well, but I think I'll go with um, the two goals that, that Tommy put out there as the, as the best two. Nice. Well, of course, don't forget, you can have your say then. You can visit the uh, official club app for that, and that's where you can make your vote. You've got until uh, next Tuesday at midday to that, Tuesday the 28th at midday, uh, and we will announce the winner on next week's show. Um, let's talk about goals for a couple of seconds for you two. Obviously, watching those back, like what I love being on this show is like hearing the insight from you, talking through those goals about composure and bits of bits. Like, when you're in the dressing room and you've, you've had a game and, and someone scored an absolute worldie, do you, do you kind of celebrate and have a chat with chat through it afterwards, or do you just kind of, yeah, I expect you to do that, let's move on. But do you, do you kind of have that banter and appreciation of each other's work on the field? I think it depends on the, on the score of the game and depends on the relationship with who it is. I think more like you will talk about it if it was a, if it was a real good goal. But depending on the score, if you've just lost and someone scored a great goal, you might you may have a private little word with them or you may say something on Monday or something, but if you've just lost you're not really gonna you don't really care about the goal at that moment. But if it was that was that was the goal, last minute goal that won the game or it's something like that, then obviously yeah, the whole the whole change room's up up in, in, in arms and everyone everyone's celebrating and everyone's I suppose patting each other on the back. I think it moment. depends on the gravity of the circumstances. You know, Cucho Hernandez is his first minute in the Premier League, and to be as composed as that and finish those sort of scenarios. I, I was always of the mindset that yeah, it's great scoring a, a, a goal from outside of the box. So most important thing is a winning goal for a, for a striker. But I'd have rather scored three tappings than two worldies in a game because. I just wanted to score all of the time. I didn't even care if it was my talent that got the ball over the line. As long as I touched it before it crossed the line, that was that, that was enough for me. <laughs> you that, know that. So how many goals did he see off the line then? Yeah, um, that's a... Let's look at the camera. The camera's got all the, all the videos on there. I'm yeah, sure they yeah. can tell us another day. But how many goal, goal lines... Goals I'm not ashamed of it. <laughs> <laughs> love that. Uh, right, time for a part of the show that I absolutely love. This is uh, Ask Tommy. This is ahead, of course, you asking your questions uh, on the show. You know how to do that by now. If you're watching on YouTube, put it in the comments box below. You can also do it on Twitter as well. Get your questions in to Ask Gifton and Tommy on the show today. There you go, all the details. Uh, Twitter at Watford FC. Use the hashtag of Inside the Hive and you can ask your questions throughout the show. But before we get to those, we always like to kick off with a game of Ask Tommy. Uh, Gifton, last time you were on the show with us, we hadn't started this feature yet. Uh, so basically what's going to happen is I'm going to ask Tommy a set of questions, see how well he gets on. Towards the end of the show, I'm going to ask you an easier set of questions and we'll see if uh, who wins, which will mostly likely be you. Uh, slight twist this week. Uh, because I'm going to ask Tommy four questions this time uh, and then the fifth question for both of you, uh, you both have to give me an answer. So we're going to save that one for the end of the show. But Tommy, are you ready for this? As always. Perfect. OK, we always start with a golf question for Tommy because we know how much he liked his golf. Uh, Tiger Woods won the 1997 US Masters, but by how many strokes? Was it 12, 12. 10? Correct. Well done. One point for Tommy. What a great start, Gift. You're under strike. pressure now. When you have to give your middle name and the name of your children for questions two, three, Tap four, in. five. I've got that. Question two. Gifton was Watford's top goal scorer in the 98-99 season. But how old was he at the time? Was he 18, 19 or 20? Well... I remember the season well because I had to play centre-half because I couldn't get in the team when he came and took the number nine shirt. 
I'd have to say, and I would make it clear, I haven't Googled Gifton. I know I normally Google the You normally the guest. Google the guest. I, I felt awkward. <laughs> He's your former teammate. I didn't really <laughs> didn't want to Google him. I, don't, I feel like I know enough <laughs> about him already. Okay. <laughs> I'm going 18, 18 years old. Incorrect. Gifton was 19. 19. Just. I was eight. I started 18, season 18, and I was 19 in January 19. when I got injured. But yeah, he was uh, 19. Okay, one point out of two one, so far. <laughs> Question three: uh, Which playoff scoring hero did Gifton come out of retirement to play for at Daventry Town in 1999? Watford ex. Ex Watford uh, player. Daventry. Yeah. You must get this. You must get this. If you don't get this, he's going to kill you. What era? Give me a clue. What era? 99. No, what era did he play in? He was part of the 99 playoff team. Oh, he was part of our team? Yeah. yeah. Right, okay. It's going to be awkward if he gets this wrong. Gifted. Yeah, because you speak to really him as well. Really awkward. You speak, you're actually friends with you him. You speak to him. Was it Pagey? No. Incorrect. Gifted? There's problem, Smarty. Was he? Yeah. Pro- I, didn't, I never played, by the way. That, that I didn't play. You still signed, though. I did sign. You did sign. I did sign for my boy. Just took the, he just took the sign on for you. That's why Smarty took the Daventry job. I didn't know that. <laughs> one out of three. Okay, your final question for the moment. In 2010... Gifton played for the DFW Tornadoes in America, but according to Wikipedia, how many appearances did he make for them? Was it seven, nine, or eleven? Seven. Incorrect. It was nine. Nine appearances. So just a one point so far, but it's not all over. We got asked Gifton a little bit later on. Of course, your fifth question that may well get you two points uh, is up for grabs a little bit later on in the show. I got my golf question right, so I'll sleep tonight. You're right, you're happy with that. Uh, that's the fun questions. The important questions come now because they're the questions that you've sent in. So a massive thank you uh, to every single one of you who's got involved so far. Still time for you to do that as well. Uh, so just drop a comment wherever you are. Okay, I love this one. This comes from Luca Hall, our first question. If you could have Christmas dinner with any past or present Watford player, who would you choose and why? That's for me. Both of you. Okay. You can start, um, though, in the past and present, um, wow, that's a really good one. Um, what for play? It's I'm a, trying to think. It's a tough question. I tell you, know, I tell you who is. Go on, then. Jamie Morley. Okay, why? Jamie Morley. Um, is he a chef now? I don't know. I don't know if he's. <laughs> good good not, call if he is there. For yeah, yeah, but, dinner. So is he a chef? Is he for sure? I don't know. All oh, right, but if he's a chef, even greater. But Jamie Morley, yeah, because I think when I was a youngster coming in, and I was only 12, 13, 14. He took, uh, took the time. He had a BMW convertible at the time, the blue one. And, but he just took the time with us youngsters and he used to drop us to London and, and look after us. And he's probably someone who I've never met since I've played football and retired. So I would actually like to be with him and just have a chat with him because he had some good stories. So I'd like to just get into his head. Nice. A bit more, he's yeah. actually a very successful agent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very nice guy, very good guy. And for you, Tommy? Uh, it's a difficult one, but I will say my old mate, TC, Tony Coton, just because I know I will laugh for the whole time that we're sat at the dinner table. If he's cooked it, it won't be worth eating anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll have a good laugh. We'll have a good laugh. Uh, next question comes from Andy. Uh, your thoughts, please, gentlemen, on Brussels sprouts with your Christmas dinner, yay or nay? Yay with pancetta. Nay all day oh, long. Nay. nay all day long. Nay. Yay no, with pancetta. No. That's a very yeah. posh Brussels sprout, that. Well, that's how we do it in Solihull. That's how you do it in Solihull. <laughs> Love that. Uh, Maria would like to know your favourite Christmas song. I can answer that. I, I did this last night on a on um, Lee Partridge's driving show, uh, driving home for Christmas, Chris Rea. I will play it tonight as that's I drive driving, home right? for Christmas. Nice, like that. I don't have one. You don't have one? Really Come bad. on, Gif. I really don't have one. I really, really don't have if one. If I'm honest, I'm disappointed none of you have said Step Into Christmas. By Sir Elton. Great song, that. That's my favourite one. That's your favourite one. I like that. That's a good one. answer. I just remember, Step Into yeah. Christmas. Love that. My favourite and one. his new one, we had cheering. You were, I got one Even that one, maybe, yeah, yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. 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 You haven't changed at all. <laughs> good evening, Sir Elton. Good to have you with us. Okay. Uh, question uh, next comes from Pierre. Who was your best friend when you played at Watford Gifton? Uh, Mike Hyde. Okay. Yeah, we still speak now. He's probably still my best friend in, in football. Yeah. yeah, but Mike Hyde, I say, yeah. my best friend. I think we've asked this one to you before, Tommy, haven't we? Your best friend at yeah, I, sp- I roomed with with Pagey for a lot of years, but we had a, we just had a great group. We did, yeah. Um, 
yeah, so I, I'd say Pagey because we roomed together, but there was four or five of us that, that were, went for a few beers every, every Tuesday night and yeah. probably 10, 11 of us. Yeah. That's probably why we got promoted. We just yeah. had a fabulous yeah. dressing room where everybody got on yeah. for the most part. That's true. Yeah. Michael was my roommate as well, and that's why we had a closer bond because we were roomies. And you're, you're right, yeah, because we were roomies. But we got, I got on with everyone, Rob Bowles, Mancha. There was so much of us, that really, that we got on. I'll probably speak to Robbo more than anybody else. I've spoken to him today. I know so. you did. You were very aggressive when you came, and I thought you were going to take someone out. He was, he was, you just could see him when he came in. He was like, ah, I thought he was going to take 20 minutes out. on the phone with Robbo, you just won a two-foot Range Rover. <laughs> I've, I've still got my shin pads on, if I'm completely honest. I was worried. I was panicking. Uh, final question for the moment. Uh, Kate says, what was your biggest achievement while at Watford? Oh, oh. I think it's hard, if I'm honest with you, because there's two. I think getting promoted to the Premiership was one. I think that has to be up there, 100%. But being the youngest ever goal scorer, I think that that is, is an achievement that is still lasting up to now. So I suppose that, between that and getting promoted to the Premiership, nice. yeah. Winning at Wembley. Mm. Doesn't get any better than that. Nice. Mm. Special. Plenty of chance for you to ask your question still on the show. You know how to do that by now. Uh, just comment if you're watching on YouTube in the box below. And if you're on Twitter, at Watford FC, use the hashtag of Inside the Hive. Uh, of course, then, we are less than 48 hours away from the big day of Christmas Day. We know what it's like. It's all about discussions around the Christmas table, eating too much food. And then by about 3, 4 o'clock, we're all arguing about our favourite Watford players. So we thought we would start a little bit earlier and we're going to start to put together our greatest Watford 11 of all time. Uh, so this is what we got. This is our formation at the moment. This could change. We may go to a 4-3-3 as we work our way through. Uh, we'll see where it takes us. But each week our guest is going to pick a player to put into the side. And we're going to start uh, with the goalkeeper on today's show. So lots of great goalkeepers to choose from. Uh, Gifton is going to have the final say on the player that we're going to put in goal. Um, we're obviously very blessed to have some amazing goalkeepers over the, over the history here of the club at Watford. Um, Let's first of all just talk about attributes as a goalkeeper for you. What, what, what's important uh, for you in a team for your goalkeeper to have? The modern day goalkeepers, is you have to be good with your feet. <clears throat> you know, the, many years ago, goalkeepers, as long as there was a good shot stopper and they commanded their box, that was enough. But now if you're not good with your feet, sometimes a good, 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 a good shot stopper, someone who's good with shot, shot in stops and, and, and saves and, and getting crashes because he can't play with his feet sometimes might not play or, or might not get signed. So a goalkeeper has to be good with his feet, a good communicator. And obviously he has to be able to keep the ball out of the net. That's, <laughs> that's adamant as well. But, but sometimes it's not the main thing for some goalkeepers. No, I think over the years we've, we've had um, goalkeepers that have gone on to play internationally. You know, I mentioned him already, Tony Coulton. Went on to have a fabulous career and was fabulous during his spell here um, before he, he, he moved on. You know, I know because I know TC so well, I know how influential Graham Taylor was, but in a very successful Watford team in the top flight, you know, TC was, a, a, well, certainly one of the best two or three in, in the country at the time. Um, what was it about him that made, that made him so good? And I think it was the moustache. <laughs> <laughs> I think strikers were, you can just see it there, the moustache there, that would, have, that would have scared me. <laughs> he, was, he, was, he was a good shot stopper, wasn't he? And he also commanded his box, didn't he? he yeah, was, I, I, I think, think it, he... he you could he'd accept responsibility. Anything that came into the 18-yard box, yeah. he came for it. Doesn't matter if it was right in the corner or right on the goal line. He was he was a, he was a brave lad and a game lad, mm -hmm. um, and grew on to be of a very very good reputation. And because of it, technically, he went on to have an exceptional career as a goalkeeper coach, too. So yeah, I think. And then you look at you know David James, went on to become um, uh, an England international, a move. To, to Liverpool from what he achieved with Watford at such a, a, a young age as well. So, you know, I think you, you have to look at those, perhaps for TC and for, for, for JMO, Watford was their learning years and they went on to play for bigger clubs at a higher level. But they'll both tell you without their time at Watford, you know, they wouldn't have had the careers that they, that they did. I think especially with JMO, I think he was always a good shot stopper and a good goalkeeper. Only when he went to Liverpool, he was expected to do much more than what he was doing at Watford. But he was a very, very good shot stopper and a very good goalkeeper again. But he was going through that transitional time when goalkeepers were now being asked to, to play with their feet a little bit more. They were asked more, more demands on them. But, but Jamo was, was, was a, another great goalkeeper. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, to throw in another couple of n names, uh, you know, Gomez was here for an, an awful long time um, and Ben Foster's still here. 
Ben's another one who went on to play um, for England here over a couple of spells. And, you know, Gomez played a lot of Premier League games, was there for promotions. And, you know, he was one of the most, I, I know from speaking to Ben, one of the most popular characters in a dressing room. And that always happens with, with goalkeepers. And I think, you know, during my time, I have to say Alec Chamberlain because, put Chamberlain in there. you know, you talk about the <coughs> Wembley, Wembley 99 game, we'd have been 3-0 down if it wasn't for Chamber. Saved penalties, you know, made stunning saves, not just at Wembley, but in the running. You know, I, I got headlines for scoring the goals, but Chamber was keeping us in the games. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So And Chamber was good with his feet as well, Moons. He, yeah. he, brought, he, brought, he showed me something different. He was the first goalkeeper that could half volley a ball and drop it on my chest. He could do it no problem and he could play with his feet left foot and right foot and he, he brought the goalkeeping kicking wise to a whole different level Chamber did mm. yeah, at, at that time he was above he was, he was on top of his time and it, he'll always have a special place in my heart because we've just seen his penalty save at St Andrews that meant we got to play at Wembley yeah. mm. and go on to win at Wembley so you know, I'd throw Chambo in the mix. No pressure on Gifton, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah. You mentioned Ben Foster in there as well, of course, uh, one of our current goalkeepers as well. You know, an amazing career he's had as well and, and, and putting him some great performances this season, of course, until he got injured. Ben's... We've both played with Ben at, at Stoke. You know, he was a young kid and Gifton mentions Chambo hitting the half volley. Ben, even as a young kid, he could drop it on the badge for me to control my chest. I didn't have to, have to jump and, and head it. Always very, very good. Fabulous left foot, but makes saves. You no, know, he, he he loves the media now, but that's he's always been a bubbly character, you know. And I think you you need that. You very, very rare you get goalkeepers that are quiet because their responsibility is the same that we had. You you they win and get won and lose games for for teams because you know of the responsibility of the of the role. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think. It, Ben's had a fabulous career and still having one. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he, yeah. he has to be in there. Yeah, I'm not going to let you pick just yet. Um, just a few more questions about goalkeepers. I think these parts of the show are like really insightful. Like, so these guys would be the, the defensive line, the last line of defence for you in a game. What were they like in training? Because I'm guessing you would be pitching yourself against them to try, to try and beat them and, and hone your skills as well. Yeah, goalkeepers, goalkeepers are uh, a special type of people. They're a strange they're, bunch, they're, let's be honest. They're a strange I bunch. I didn't want to say that, but they, they're a strange bunch. They, they, they're different. They're very different to everyone else. And when you think about it realistically, if you're a young child, who wants to go in front of all your friends kicking balls at them? You have to be a certain person that you like, that you like that challenge and you love that challenge. So the banter with goalkeepers is always great, especially when you're doing finishing sessions and you're doing things like that. When you give them the eyes and you pull the other corner and they go crazy or you try and chip them and... They kick the ball away, and they, they, they're they just completely different. They're, they're normally with it, with it with each other. So the goalkeepers normally just stay with the goalkeepers. They don't really mix with anyone else, and they're normally just a bit crazy and a bit bit bubbly than everyone else. But you know, you need them to be that way because when you think about the game properly, we are playing the game. They're standing watching the game for most of the game. If you watch goalkeepers when the game's going on, they're running up and down, stretching. They're doing all kind of other stuff that have nothing to do with the match because they've got to keep themselves mentally. So imagine keeping yourself mentally tuned into a 90 minute match when you're only involved in maybe two minutes of the match. It's their concentration periods have yeah. to be su sustained far longer than ours because we'd be involved in the game pretty much all of the time. As a striker, mm. if you, have, if you aren't, haven't got the ball or are not asking for the ball, you're still involved because you're making runs or you're defending. For a goalkeeper, it's different. So yeah. their concentration levels, uh, the top, top goalkeepers are the mm. ones with the, the best concentration levels yeah. over a sustained period. And, and does playing with a top goalkeeper make you better? Because in training, of course, you're trying to outwit them and hone your skills as well. So, so playing against someone where actually you've got to really work hard to score against in training, does that make you a better player as well? I think it does. But it's also, it, it, raises, it raises your game because it ra raises your desire to beat that goalkeeper. It doesn't matter It doesn't matter who's in the number one shirt or the green shirt. Yeah. For me, I want to put the ball past, past them. Simple as that. And if I was working on a daily basis with a very, very good goalkeeper, it was harder for me to do it. So I'd have to practice more and, and, and perhaps raise my game on a daily basis. Because the last thing you want to do, Gifton's already said they're a strange bunch, the last thing you want to do is have a goalkeeper have something over you because they never leave it alone. They're like that. We have a strikers union, they have yep. the goalkeepers union. And to be in that goalkeepers union, you have to be a loon. Yep. 
Okay, no pressure then, Gifton. Uh, you get the first selection. Of course, sir, we want to hear from you as well on this. Get involved on social media. Let us know who you would maybe pick as your goalkeeper to go into our 11. But Gifton, you are in control. You have the power to pick the greatest goalkeeper for our greatest Watford 11. So no pressure. Who are you feel, going for? I feel that for me personally, I'm picking this person because I've been around this goalkeeper myself. I've, I've known them personally. I see what they can deliver on the training ground, what, how good they are up front, and seen the career they've had and seen what they've done on the pitch. So Ben Foster is my, is, is my pick. Um, it was hard because, as, as Tommy said, Chambo could be up there. Um, there's a few other, Tony Cole, and there's all the greats that could be up there. But I feel, if you look at the modern-day goalkeeper, um, Ben's feet, his hands, his concentration, his attributes, I feel he is the the best goalkeeper to, to have played for Watford, in my opinion. Yeah. Amazing. Well, a great start. Uh, of course, another 10 weeks of picking players to go in that side. So let us know your thoughts. Our different guests each week are going to pick a player and put them into that side. I said the formation may change as we start adding players into that, but uh, we're going to look to see how that one comes together over the next few weeks. Uh, right, let's look forward to the next action then for us that we have in the diary. Of course, it's that game versus West Ham United on Tuesday here at Vicarage Road. Um, gents, let's get your thoughts on that one going into that one. Tommy, you'll be on commentary duty for that one. What are your thoughts about that West Ham game? Yeah, I think it's another. It's a great opportunity. And it, when you have games call, called off, we've, we've for obviously very different reasons, but we've had games called off because of the weather. Um, I think it's, it's difficult to get on the training pitch and you don't know what West Ham's gonna, team's going to turn up. They're having a, a, a f fabulous season so far, but because of what's happening, you don't know what that... You, perhaps a month ago, you could nail 10 of the 11 starting players in that West Ham team. You can't do that anymore. You know, and they, they, they've had some good results, perhaps dropped a little bit uh, of late, but it'll be a tough game. You know, it always would be with West Ham coming, coming here. Um, but after the the little lulling fixtures that we've had, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah I think they're beatable. I think West Ham are, are a good team. Of them. The David Moyes has done miracles with that with that group of players, the way he's wanted them together and moulded them. They're a really, really hard team to beat. But it's Christmas time. It's Christmas time and there's COVID, there's injuries, There's they, they lost a cup game the other day. There's, there's a lot of things right now that are going on right now that I think that if Watford really go, really start off well, being at home as well, and you get the first goal, um, you never know. I, I think we can get a result out of the game. I want them to get a result out of the game, so I'm going to say we're going to get a result out of the game. Yeah, they must do. Of course, that game uh, on Tuesday, the 28th, then make sure you keep up to date on all the social media channels. So as I mentioned, Tom, you will be on commentary for that one as well. OK, time for another farm part of the show. It's time for Ask Gifton this time. Just the one point for Tommy. Uh, in his questions, so uh, a chance for you to get a strong lead on this one. And of course, uh, question five will be a question you will both answer. Uh, so Gifton, let's start for you. Uh, you made your Watford debut in the League Cup against who? Oh, Sunderland. Correct, point. See, I told you, not too, not yeah. too difficult. Honestly, that'll be the hardest one, trust me. Question number two, the 12th of September, 2006. Does that date ring a bell for you? Mm. It's a very special day because you scored your first, first ever goal. professional hat-trick uh, in Burnley's 4-2 victory. But who was it over? Who did you play? Barnsley. Correct. Two points. <laughs> Tommy, don't shake your head. Question three is quite tough. Oh, yeah. Tommy famously played for Birmingham uh, from June 2001 to July 2003. But how many league starts did he make? Was it 26 29 or 32? 29. Correct. That is uh, three out of three so oh, far. Yes. Right. <laughs> Question four is also Fif about 15 Tommy. goals in 33 games. Just throw, I'm just going to throw that That's in there. That's a good there. stat. That's a very good stat. stat. Goal Bro machine. Brought my ankle that promotion season. Very good Ouch. stat. Ouch. Okay. Question four for you, Gifton. Mm -hmm. Watford's inaugural Premier League season started brightly for Tommy because he scored the only goal in an away victory at Anfield. But true or false, was the goal scored in front of the cop? True or false? I mean, it's a 50-50 answer. Yeah, it was. Is it true? Yeah, Tommy? True. It was. It Correct. Was yeah. Four out of four. We're going to have a bit of fun with the last question anyway. Gifting, you have you, one. Didn't you run the full length of the pitch? No. No. I was under a big... 
pile on. Is it? Players, uh, yeah. I, thought, I thought you scored and ran and then they've celebrated down there. That end. That's no. what I thought. Okay. Was it a good goal? Across the line. Yeah. Across the line. Was it someone else's goal that you nicked? No, no, no. It was, it was, it was, it was legitimately a scruffy your goal. One, it was a scruffy one, yeah. Scruffy Most one, of mine yeah. were scruffy. You know that. No, no you scored some good goals. Pagey and Mark Williams challenge Callagher. Corner. And, was it a corner? Yeah. A corner, yeah. Callagher and Redknapp and it just fell to me. I squeezed it in yeah. from six yards. That's what that matters, though, man. Okay. Question five. This is a joint question. Gifting this could be a chance for you to get five out of five. You've already beat Tommy, but it's important to get the scores on the board. Uh, so, Tommy, I'm going to start with you for this one. From this very seat, as the crow flies, how far is it to the geographical North Pole? Wait, so let me just clarify. There's going to be three options, and I'm going first, and if I get it wrong, Gifton's then got a 50-50. No. It's even easier than that for Gifton, <laughs> because I'm going to ask you to give me a distance, and then Gifton has to go higher or lower. <laughs> <laughs> so Tommy from this very chair come on Tom Vicarage Road to the geographical North Pole to see Santa and the elves to wrap presents ahead of Christmas Day how many miles as the crow flies this is direct straight line from this very seat to the North Pole um, 23,000 miles 112 23,000 miles Gifting would you like to go higher or lower than 23,000 miles I've, I've pitched that number to perfection because you really don't know, do you? I haven't got a clue, mate. I haven't got a clue. Hi, well, it's I just past Peterborough. Uh, is it? Mm. I thought it was a Stevenage. Lower. You're going lower. The correct answer is 2,649.49 miles. So the what? correct winner... Geographical North Pole. Gifton, five out of five. Congratulations I was to you. Twenty three thousand miles is a long yeah. it's only five hundred miles to Scotland, Scotland, and that's quite a way. That's what I was trying to work out in my yeah. head. Yeah, that's what I was trying to Yeah, but and it's the North Pole, I'm, it's not as far as you think. I, I went around the M twenty five. Several times around the M twenty five. Love that. Uh, Gifton, a victory for you five out of five. I think you're our first five out of five as well, so congratulations. I'm not surprised with those questions. You've still <laughs> got to know the answer. First. It's easy if you know the answer, Tommy. If you had Googled Gifton, you would have been all right. No way, Tom. Okay. Like Important questions now, because these are the fan questions coming your way. Uh, Charlotte has the first question. Uh, how do Gifton and Tommy think COVID has affected players' welfare? Um, COVID has had well-being impacts on many people. Players are people with families just like the rest of us. How do you think it's uh, impacted the, the, the lives of the players? I think far greater than, than people might, might think. I think anything that's out of the norm for a, for a footballer, you're essentially told what time to be at the training ground or the stadium, wearing what for the entirety of your career. When that doesn't become the norm, it's quite difficult. And that's why a lot of players struggle after retirement. So I think that, that this has been a real tough task for the players. And that's why you know I made it very very clear at the end of last season for the players to achieve promotion with no supporters in the stadium was a huge achievement far bigger than a normal promotion and i think that this time around when they're dealing with training ground closures isolation for many of them i think it's a very very difficult time on their uh, on their mentality really as opposed to physically Mm. And from a player's bit of welfare as well, Ollie's thrown a question into the mix as well, saying, do, do, do you think that the league should have had a, a fire break and, and shut down? What do you think on that one, Gifton? Um, if I'm, <laughs> I, I, I'm not really the person to answer, answer that question, if I'm honest with you, because um, I, I, I feel that football kind of needs to go on, because I believe, the reason why I say football needs to go on, I believe that it does so much good things to the nation and, and for people, and it brings so much positivity so I believe football should go on as long as it is safe and players' welfare is, is not being jeopardised just so that we can have a show. Yeah, for sure. So that's where I kind of stand with it, as in, I, 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 I do think football should go on because players have not come out yet, as far as I know, and said, we, as a as collective, we don't want to play. I believe the players came out as a collective and they said that we didn't want to play for these reasons. I think then they should respect the players mm -hmm. and we should have a break. Um, but if, as long as the players are happy to go out and perform and they're healthy and they're, they're safe, it's safe for them to do it, then I, I, I want to see football and I think the whole nation, and as we spoke about it in the show, I think footballers want to go and play. Yeah. <laughs> they don't want to be at home scooped up because it just makes it worse. I think the key, the key to it is mm. that it goes for the football clubs to decide 
not somebody in an office that's never kicked the ball, mm. go to the football clubs, which they appear to be doing, mm -hmm. and speaking to the owners, the managers, the players, because those are the integral parts of it. We all want to see football uh, as much normality as we can, but go to the people that are involved and speak to those individuals and let them collectively make a decision. It's the very same with, with the vaccines. Mm. I'm vaccinated, I've had my booster. I would never dream of telling somebody else to get a vaccine. Mm. And I think that that's very, very similar in the fact that don't tell football clubs how, how to run their business. For sure. I think that the one of the toughest things I think for the players is they're out there playing against other players and then they're obviously mixing with their families and they're, then they're playing, then they're mixing with their families. So I think the men, from the mental side of things and, and, and from that kind of thing, they're looking at it thinking, well, am I going to actually hurt one of my family? Can I not go and see my, my, my someone? I can't see my daughter, my daughter can't go to school, or she can't do this. Or, to do those kind of things, I think, come into it more around the football. But the actual football itself, footballers just want to play, I yeah, think, really sure. and truly. So I'll, we'll leave that to the government to, to do sure. what they have to, they have to yeah, do. Yeah, massively. Um, next question comes from Freddie. Uh, who is your favourite player in the current squad, Gifton? Um, my my, my favourite player in the current squad, who excites me, I would say, was Saar. Um, Saar's been injured for a big part of this season, so this year I think Dennis has taken up the the um, the, the mantle of exciting me. Yeah. But if you ask me, Gifton, who do you fundamentally is your best player? It's got to be Josh King. Nice. Because what he brings to the team, I think, is more than what anyone else brings to the team. Final question comes from Carson. Uh, what was your favourite Hornet shirt that you ever played in? Is that for me, yeah? Yeah. Oh, um, we, we, Tommy talks about his favourite shirt. Every week. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's got to be the, um, the promotional season. That's the one with the uh, when we had the blue and the blue and the silver kit. That uh, one. Yeah, that was the promotion in ninety nine, ninety eight. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, kit, yeah, yeah, that kit, the blue and the silver. But we also had the one, the yellow, with the red and the black. I like that was probably my favourite. Two sets of kits, yeah. Amazing. Do you have a favourite away shirt? We know your favourite home shirt. Do you have a favourite away one? I actually like that one that Gifton's talking about, the retro shirt that's available now in the club shop. You're welcome. Smooth <laughs> and seamless. There we go. I don't I think it's a bit too late to get it for Christmas, but maybe in the January sale if you want to get yourself, uh, spend some of your pennies for Christmas. Um, Tommy Gifton, thank you so much. Pleasure to have your company as always. Uh, now, before we go, uh, Tommy has had his eye on this Christmas tree and the Christmas decorations uh, from the very moment they went up. Tommy, you would like to take a decoration home. Uh, which one would you, would, you, would you like to take home? Um, I'd like the traditional yellow. You'd like the traditional please. yellow one? Because where I pull the whole tree over. There we go. Merry Christmas. A gift you. from me to you. Uh, and Gifton, it would be remiss of me not to take one for you. I'll have the black one, please. Yeah? Yeah. That's for you. you. And I'm going to take you this one much. here, which is the little Tommy Mooney in a Father Christmas outfit. Uh, <laughs> guys, thank you very much. Have a very Merry Christmas. Uh, Merry Christmas to all of you as well. Uh, please stay safe. Stay safe. We will see you on the 28th. Have a very Merry Christmas, and we'll see you next time.